we're going to look at making basic materials and textures in Maya. So what I've already got going is I've got a basic start to a cityscape. I've got a few simple buildings, one with a little bit more of a complex top, and then one made out of a few more basic shapes. Um, I've also got a plane on the bottom is the ground and two other boxes that I'm using as roads for now. So before we even get started, uh, you want to make sure that you have some texture files in place already on your computer. A good place to find texture files is going to be textures.com. Um, real simple address. You do need to make a login for it. It's free. They don't send you spam email, but once you do, you get a bunch of free downloads, which are royalty-free images, meaning they're not going to be copyrighted like the ones you might find on Google. Um, for buildings, which is what I'm doing right now, what I like to look for is under the buildings category, <clears throat> you have all different kinds. Um, the high rises work best for what I'm doing. So I'm going to look in there and I can look through different kinds of high rises. If I look through different kinds of glass, I can see all these different ones. Ones that I do want to point out is that if they have this seamless icon, that means that you can mirror them or kind of copy and paste them seamlessly throughout any kind of a uh, material. So I'm going to find one real quick that I might like, like these blue ones or just simple glass ones. I'll download it. If I look, I've got a few different download sizes. I'll go ahead and pick the biggest. And I can locate that in my downloads folder. <clears throat> but you don't want to just keep them on your downloads folder or you don't want to just keep them on your desktop. Maya, you want to put them in a very specific spot. So the, what you want to find is under your documents, you should have a folder called Maya under projects, default, and then these are kind of where all the uh, files for our Maya products are stored. The one that we're looking for is called source images. I know that was kind of a long chain, but again, documents, Maya, projects, default, and source images. And you can see I've already got a handful of images dragged in here. So I'm just going to click and drag from my downloads into that source images folder, and I'm good to go. So back in Maya, <clears throat> I can click on an object and open up what's called the Hypershade Editor. Up here in the top, there's just this little blue circle with that little highlight on it. It's going to open up a whole separate window. Uh, before we get started in here, make sure that you can see your browser, your Create window, the Material Viewer, and the Property Editor. If any of those go missing at any time, you can get them back by going up the window and clicking on whichever one you need. So under the create, to start by creating a new uh, file, there's all different kinds of presets, but the ones we're looking at are the Lambert and the Blend. Lambert is that kind of flat, matte color, and Blend is a little bit shinier. If you just click on one, over here, you'll see it's created. So I've got my Lambert number four. It's important that I know what uh, that's named because at some point I'm going to rename it. Over here, I can click on the color and then pick any color for mine. <clears throat> I can also change a few other things like the transparency if I want it to be kind of like a translucent thing, maybe some windows. Um, the ambient color refers to how it's going to glow when it's reacting to certain lights or anything else around it, as well as incandescence. There's a handful of other settings that we can look at later, but right now I want to name it because Lambert 4 is kind of generic. So let's go ahead and name this um, Lambert underscore blue. So I know that this is going to be my blue Lambert. <clears throat> so from here, if I drag my window over, so I can see my objects. If you use the middle button, when you click and drag on this guy, you can click and drag it onto one of your objects. So I'm using the middle button when I click down. And there I go. Something you want to make sure is checked if you haven't done so already, is you want to make sure that this textured setting up here is, uh, is turned on, otherwise you won't be able to see your textures when we create them. So now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and close my editor. And what I can do from here on out, Instead of opening up that uh, material editor, if I right-click on an object, I'm going to right-click and hold, and I drag down to down here where it says assign new material, favorite material, or existing material, I can see that I've got that Lambert blue that I just created. So if I right-click, existing material, Lambert blue, it'll apply that same material. Pretty easy. <clears throat> On the screen, I've got the attribute editor open over here on the right. I find my Lambert blue up here, and I can edit that if I need to. Now, let's say I wanted to apply a new material. Instead of going to that window, I'm going to right-click this guy, 
assign new material, I'm going to do a Lambert again, but I'm going to apply a texture to this one. So let's open up a new Lambert. <clears throat> well, it looks like it's on this guy instead. So that was Lambert 5. So let's go ahead and apply it to this guy. And instead of giving it a color this time, I'm going to click on this little check mark or this uh, checker box right next to it. It'll open up this new window and I can apply a bunch of other kinds of effects or materials to this. The one that I'm going to look for right now is called File because I want to apply that JPEG, that um, image that we downloaded. So I clicked on File. And now under this attribute editor, I've got this folder. I click on the folder. By default, it should open up that folder, that source images that I saved my images to. If it doesn't, just go ahead and locate it over here in the left. So I can scroll through these. I've got that paper bags from other projects, and I've got all different kinds of textures in here. So I can go ahead and hit open, and bam, it applies it. Now, right away, I can tell that something's a little bit wrong with that. So what we need to do is called UV mapping. I'll cover that in a later video. But basically, this is how to apply simple textures and materials to your objects in Maya 2018.